I want to share a method for better understanding native Chinese speakers, one that I've been sort of accidentally developing and tinkering at for almost a year and a half now while learning Chinese. Being able to finally understand native Chinese speakers is probably the most rewarding part about learning Chinese for me, even more than speaking in some ways, because it allows me to connect with the culture of the language through listening to podcasts, through watching movies and TV shows, and it also allows me to have meaningful conversations and build great friendships. So in this video, I'll share some of the benefits that I see for wanting to improve your listening comprehension as a way to better understand native Chinese speakers. And then I'll go over six actionable practical tips on how to use podcasts to improve your listening comprehension. In case you guys were wondering, my current listening comprehension is probably about 70 to 80 percent of most native conversations or podcasts. But I think the most important thing is that I feel confident that I can understand the main gist of a conversation, even though I don't understand a particular word or you know a particular idiom. But flashback to a year and a half ago, this definitely was not the case. I remember when I first came to Taiwan and I would go to convenience stores or cafes and the register or the server would say something to me and I would just be completely blanking out and not understanding what they were saying. So the first and most compelling reason to improve your listening comprehension is that it's arguably the best way to start learning a language. There's a lot of research within the language learning community that early on you probably want to have lots and lots of input. It's almost like you're soaking or bathing your brain in all of this juicy native audio input. So you're getting accustomed to the sounds of the language, the tones, the intonations, the pauses, the rhythms of the language, so that when it comes time for you to actually speak to say something, you're going to have all that input already embedded sort of in your subconscious memory. It's available when you need it. One of the really cool things that I've found with listening to a lot of podcasts is that there are certain phrases and idioms that almost seemed etched or burned into my memory. So for example, example, Tu Fei Meng Jing, which is learn at a really fast pace, or Quan Li Fu, which is giving it your all, going all out. The second reason is that improving your listening comprehension is so fun. When I noticed myself finally understanding what native speakers were talking about, you know, in daily life, consuming content through movies, through podcasts, that was such a thrilling feeling. I feel like I'm finally able to almost become a member of this community that speaks a different language, one that I've been almost peering into for so long. The third reason is that I think improving your listening comprehension is great for conversations. One experience that really sticks out to me is when I first moved to Taiwan and the first friend I made was the most endearing and charming owner of this small family restaurant under the building that I was living in. I called her Lao Ban Yang and I would go there every day and chat with her for almost three hours at a time, delving into deep, deep topics from the meaning of life to family and relationships and girlfriends and whether I should get married. And I always wondered why she spent so much time talking to me because at that point, my speaking was pretty poor. I didn't know how to say much at all, but I was able to understand a lot of what she was saying. Granted, she she used very simple language at that time and we had a lot of help from Google Translate. By cultivating good listening comprehension, people are going to love to talk to you. As a language learner, I think this is especially powerful because this opens the door for more opportunities to find language partners, practice your speaking. Okay, so let's go over six actionable and practical tips on how I use podcasts to improve my listening comprehension. Number one is listening to it once without stopping. How about I just show you guys step by step what I mean? So this is the app that I use. It's called Himalaya or Shimalaya. And I've talked about this before. It's a great app for looking for Chinese podcasts. So if we click on the library here, th these are all the podcasts that I've downloaded in the past. And uh, one that I really like that I've been listening to recently is this one called Bear Talk or Shuo. And as you can see, there's tons and tons of podcasts. If you are just starting out, I recommend probably finding an episode that is uh, a little bit shorter, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, nothing too long. And uh, don't worry if you can't understand everything. Uh, in fact, when I first started out, I barely understood anything. So 
Uh, it's, it's normal, it's natural, it's part of the process. So if I'm listening to a podcast episode for the first time, I love to just play it and listen to it once without stopping at all and just trying to see how much of that podcast, uh, that episode, I really understand. So why don't we try it with this episode that I've downloaded? 这个视频我要分享世界一线的畅销书作家 YouTube主播 Jay Shetty So number two is speaking out as you're listening As the sounds while I'm listening to the podcast I'm usually mimicking or imitating what the speaker said because I know that this is going to increase the number of reps for me It's going to sort of close that feedback loop of listening and then speaking It's almost like how a baby learns a language by imitating or mimicking their parents. So I'll show you guys exactly what I do. Let's play this. See how I'm repeating it? YouTube主播 Jay Shetty 如何能够做到一年阅读三百六十五本书的一年阅读三百六十五本书的技巧 感兴趣的话,请继续收看 So as you can see, I'm just repeating what he's saying, mimicking it as much as possible, trying to copy that pronunciation in those tones. Obviously, when you're first starting out, this is going to be much harder, but as you go and practice more and more, this is going to become much more easier. So normally when I do this, I'm not pausing and playing every time I'm repeating a word, but I'm just doing this just to show you guys so it's easier for you guys to see. So normally there are some pauses in the episode when the speaker speaks, so I am able to squeeze in some of that imitation, or sometimes I'm even just shadow mouthing it or just whispering it so that it's not that loud and I can still listen in the background. So number three is re-listening to the podcast and looking up new words. Once I've listened to it again, I usually go back and listen to it two to five more times because I know that each time I listen to it, I'm getting all that great spaced repetition that allows my brain to soak up all that new vocabulary, all those new words, all those new phrases and idioms. On the second pass listening, I'll usually look up new words. So if there's a word that I don't understand, I'll usually use Pleco and look it up. So I'll play this episode again and show you guys exactly what I do. So for example, if I don't know what 世界一线 is, I'll just switch over to my Pleco app, erase this. Now, of course, you need to know a basic amount of pinyin. So I'll type in what I heard. So 世界, now 世界, I know, I know what that means and I know the pinyin for that. Now, of course, when you're first starting out, pinyin might be a little bit difficult, especially if you're just listening to it and you need to translate uh, the pinyin some some things that I usually try out. So for example, 世界, sometimes it's a little bit hard to hear. Sometimes you can try different things like 四 or uh, it also sounds a lot like 十 or uh, especially when you're first not starting out or 四. So you, you can try different ways of spelling it just to see if you find the, the right word. And sometimes even now it takes me uh, a couple of tries sometimes when I, especially when I can't hear it clearly or if they're speaking very fast. So, but this one I know is 世界, which means world. And then 一线 is Y-I, X-I-A-N. So, 一线, so as you can see, it means frontline. And, and this plus line here means that I've saved it before, but this is not a word that I use normally. So what I normally do is I can delete the card and then add it again. And this will appear on the top of my saved uh, word lists. And what I can do is I can go to my cards, go to my list, and as you can see, it's on the top of my list now because I've deleted it and I've saved it again. And then I can go back to this. 一线. 对, 一线. So 一线, 世界一线, that just means front line of the world. And so we can go back to the episode. 唱销书作家, YouTube主播, Jay Shetty. 如何能够做到一年阅读三百六十五本书的技巧? So for example, if I don't know what detail is, go back, detail. So I'll just basically think of how the pinyin sounds. So T is J-I, and then Tiao. Once you've learned the pinyin and you get a better handle of it, you'll realize that you know, this comes much quicker. So detail. It means skill. So as you can see, I've saved before. 
And this is a word that I use quite often, but for example, if I don't use it often and I want to learn it again, then like I said, I can delete it and add it again. And then this is gonna appear on the top of my flashcard lists. When you save these, you can of course use it for flashcards and that will really help with your active recall. When I first started listening to native podcasts, I didn't understand much of anything at all, but I didn't look up every word I didn't understand because that would be pretty arduous. So I was going at a pace that was still fun and relaxing for me. So probably one word every 30 seconds to a minute, or if I was hearing a word multiple times over and over again. So I'll listen to the rest of this podcast and look up some words. Tip number four is to write something short. So once you've listened to the episode a couple times and you've accumulated a bit of vocabulary, a bit of new words, usually what I do at this point is I'll choose some of the new vocabulary that I think is particularly interesting and I'll just basically write a short journal entry about these vocabulary, you know, using them as much as possible. For example, if it's an idiom that I think is particularly interesting, I'll try to share some of my experiences around this idiom. You know, what does this idiom mean? This is great for active recall. So not only are you using these words that you've just listened to in sentences, you're also actively recalling old words or old phrases that you've used before. Tip number five is reading out what you wrote. So basically what you just wrote down in your journal entry, try filming yourself reading out what you wrote. So if you've seen my previous video that I made on my 30 day speaking challenge, this is precisely what I did. I chose an interesting idiom or an interesting phrase every day. And then I wrote a short paragraph or a short you know, journal entry. And then every day I would film myself speaking. And not only did this really help me improve my pronunciation, it also helped me consolidate what I had written down and what I'd heard through the podcasts. So as you can probably tell, each tip is sort of adding a different layer, adding a different angle to your learning so that you're really deepening those connections. Tip number six is trying to use the words or the phrases that you've learned with your friends or with your teachers. So whether it's with language exchange partners or with your teachers on italki, you can try to use your phrases or you know the words that you've learned with them and try to see what their reaction is. Did they understand what you were saying or were they confused? What do they think? Is there a better way to say this. At the end of the day, I think most of us want to learn languages because we want to be able to communicate, because we want to be able to build relationships, build connections. At least this was one of my main motivations for learning a language. So don't be afraid with experimenting and using what you've learned with your friends, with your language exchange partners and with your teachers. Again, this is just my strategy. There are many different ways to go about understanding native speakers. I'm definitely not an expert at this. I still have lots to learn. Hopefully this was helpful. If you like this video, I made a very short playlist of some of my best Chinese learning tips. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.